New Medical Study on the Baha'i Fast, a Baha'i blog interview conducted by Sanjal Vreeland. The team at Baha'i Blog was excited to learn of a new medical study that was conducted specifically on the Baha'i Fast. This mixed methods research project involved specific lab tests and measurements, as well as interviews and questionnaires, and it was initiated by Dr. Daniela Kopold and her team in Berlin, Germany. It's the first time we've heard of such a scientific initiative, and we were thrilled to find out more. The Baha'i writings describe the spiritual benefits of fasting in various passages. But what are the material effects of abstaining from food and drink from sunrise until sunset for 19 consecutive days? Dr. Daniela Kovold and her colleagues set out to explore that very question. Here's what she shared about how they went about their research and what they discovered. Daniela, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? And how did this study come about? Uh, I'm a medical doctor and I have specialized in, um, I'm a general practitioner also, and I've specialized on natural um, therapies and integrative medicine. So um, in, I, I work in an office as a GP, but also in research at the Charité University um, in Berlin. And in my research department, we concentrate a lot on natural healing methods, um, which are very diverse. Actually, we, we have um, we focus on traditional um, medicines like traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda, um, but we also have a very large um, piece of our work, which is um, concerned with plant-based nutrition and also with fasting. And um, now this is my background. I'm doing the fasting studies uh, mainly as a coordinator for different indications uh, for different uh, patient groups like um, for neurodegenerative diseases like multiple sclerosis, um, but also for metabolic diseases and various types of fasting also, like intermittent fasting, prolonged fasting, fasting during chemotherapy. There's, there's different, different kinds um, of fasting that we are looking at. So this is my area of specialization. This is where I come from. This study came about because actually why I came to this job is because of Baha'i fasting. Uh, my colleagues at university would uh, would ask me, well, um, how can you do the Baha'i fast? It, it doesn't seem to be healthy. How can you not drink for such a long time? And all these things, you know the questions. And my father, who is also a medical doctor, um, he encouraged me to write my PhD thesis on the Baha'i fast because he said, well, you are in that position um, to, to, um, do, to, to, re to do research on it. Um, still at that point, I, I was not in the research department. I was, I was at another university and uh, I didn't know how to, how to go about it because there was no research yet on Baha'i fasting. And um, then I found a professor who said, okay, you can do a literature research on other kinds of religious fast and see whether you can do something like a review. And I did that, and on this way of writing my PhD about these other kinds of religious fast, including Ramadan fasting, um, I uh, stumbled over a, a teacher, a professor, that um, could help me more on the subject because he had done a lot on therapeutic fasting and he connected me to this research department I'm in now and they took me because they saw that I have interest in fasting and there's not so many medical um, like doctors who are interested in that so I was able to um, work there in the department for two and a half years on the ward having a lot of fasting patients uh, where we did the fasting therapy with them prolonged fasting over um, five seven or ten days um, and then I went to the research department where I'm in where I'm at now and um, as soon as I went into the research department I said well now if there's any possibility I can do any uh, study on the Baha'i fast I would love to <laughs> and then um, 
things, uh, yeah, confirmations came, cooperations came that made it possible, and especially it was made possible by the sponsoring through the Baha'i. From it's it's a found a found it's a foundation actually from um, Baha'is for Baha'i studies. So um, they made it possible. They gave us some funding, and that was um, that opened the way to do this research at the university because, of course, we had to pay personnel and everything. Um, it was a very very small budget, and that's why it um, took us some time also to. Um, to figure everything out and especially after the study to um, calculate all the outcomes and bring them together and so on because it was all in the free time of everybody but um, it has interesting outcomes so it was worth everything. What was the nature of the study? The nature of the study was it was a um, an observational study um, with mixed methods. Mixed methods means that you have different approaches, like, for example, laboratory measurements and um, interviews, which are very different kind of things. You also um, analyze them differently. The one is a quantitative finding, the other one is qualitative finding, but you can relate them in, in certain ways to get a more profound and more... Um, all-round understanding of the phenomenon you're studying. So we did um, lab measurements, we did questionnaires, we did chronobiological lab measurements, uh, which means uh, to see what the inner clock does in the body um, during the fasting period. <clears throat> we also did um, interviews and some very special metabolic measurements um, called, for example, microdialysis in the muscle and the adipose tissue. For those really interested in a few more details, I'll read the abstract of one of the publications currently under review. Background. Religiously motivated Baha'i fasting is a form of intermittent dry fasting celebrated by abstaining from food and drinks during daylight hours every year in March for 19 consecutive days. Aim, to test safety and effects of Baha'i fasting on hydration, metabolism, and circadian clock. Methods, 34 healthy Baha'i volunteers, of which 15 were women, participated in this prospective exploratory cohort study. Laboratory examinations were carried out in four study visits, before fasting, B0, in the third week of fasting, B1, as well as three weeks, B3, and three months before after fasting. Data collection included blood and urine samples, anthropometric measurements, and bioelectrical impedance analysis. At V0 and V1, 24 and 12 hour urine and serum osmolality were measured. At V0 to V2, alterations in circadian clock phase were monitored in 16 participants. Our study was augmented by an additional survey with 144 healthy Baha'i volunteers filling out questionnaires and with subgroups attending metabolic measurements and qualitative interviews. Results. Serum osmolality and 24-hour urine osmolality decreased during daytime fasting, but remained within the physiological range and return to their pre-fasting levels during night hours. BMI, total body fat mass, and basal metabolic rate decrease significantly during fasting, while body cell mass and body water appeared unchanged. The phase of circadian rhythms advanced by 1.1 hours during fasting and returned to pre-fasting values three weeks after fasting. Most observed changes were not detectable anymore three months after fasting. Conclusions. Results indicate that Baha'i fasting is safe, has no negative effects on hydration, can improve fat metabolism, and can cause transient phase shifts of circadian rhythms. So this abstract mentions your findings briefly. Could you share a little bit more with us? We had, um, we had plasma and urine osmolality measured, which means that um, we looked at the 
uh, density of uh, of the of blood and urine samples, and um, we saw that the density in most of the participants' um, samples was lower during fasting, which means the, uh, the samples were diluted. And we couldn't really find an answer because we would have thought you drink less, um, it will be concentrated um, and not diluted. <laughs> but uh, there were there's um, different effects and probably the, the most significant of them being that people, as they told us in, in their interviews, that they would drink more consciously and probably even more than usual um, during the time they can drink um, so that their fluid uh, intake was even better during fasting than before or after. So that's that's one of the interesting findings that we had that because we were thinking, okay, probably th there might be a problem with um, having concentrated plasma and um, being hypohydrated. Uh, or dehydrated, but obviously in most of the participants, th this was not um, not the case. Um, which doesn't mean you shouldn't take care of um, drinking. As as I said, the participants said that they did care more, and this is probably why we had such a good hydration. Um, the other interesting thing is that um, body fat and body mass index uh, were lower during fasting, like they went lower um, significantly. And afterwards, they came back to uh, almost the level they were before. We had a three-month follow-up. So there was no, as we call, yo-yo effect, like that, that you would have more, you would gain more weight because you lost it quickly. This is not the case. You um, maximum you get back to the um, where you started at least this is what we can see in the statistics um, actually we had a bit less weight even after three months than before the fasting um, and the interesting thing is that this even happened although the uh, basal metabolic rate the basic metabolic rate um, went down, which is something we expect in diets and in intermittent fasting anyhow, because the less calories you have as an intake, the more your metabolic rate also gets a bit lower. This is um, economic kind of way of the organism to uh, see to how it can um, practically... Um, not expend, not have so much expenditure, <laughs> uh, right? So if you take less calories, your basal metabolic rate gets lower. And from the little calories you have as an intake, you have more output, let's say. And, and this often is the reason why people get this um, yo-yo effect after dieting because the basal metabolic rate gets lower. The metabolism in general, obviously, gets lower and then as they start eating normally again um, the weight goes up very quickly because this basal metabolic rate does not adjust as quickly so um, th the, they um, get more adipose tissue for example in in the time of the refeeding phase um, and this, like we saw the basal metabolic rate get get lower, which we expected. But what we also saw, and that's interesting, is that the metabolism in the skeletal muscle and in the um, adipose tissue, which we measured through microdialysis, so this is a very, very specific and very uh, rare kind of um, examination you can do because you need... Um, uh, like a, a dialysis is something where you put um, a fluid, um, a syringe with fluid inside a tissue and, and on the other side this fluid comes out again and um, you can measure what exactly happened in between, like in the tissue, what kind of... Um, what kind of um, metabolism um, took, took place. There, so how much glucose, for example, was um, was um, 
taken up and how much of carbon dioxide, for example, um, was uh, came came out and and etc. So it's it's quite difficult, and we had the chance to do this here, and we saw that um, as well the skeleton the the skeletal muscle as well as the adipose tissue um, raised their metabolism, which is quite a paradoxical finding. And it probably um, has to do with, with this kind of intermittent fasting. I believe it also has to do with the component of dry fasting. Um, but anyhow, that's not, we, we couldn't explain it very well. It's an interesting finding though, because that was the reason probably why people lost weight and could also hold it after the fast. Then what we also saw was that, of course, the glucose metabolism became better, like um, the um, blood sugar was less during fasting and also for some times after the fasting, the levels of blood, blood glucose, which, uh, which are um, quite a, um, a risk factor for, for chronic diseases, was lower after fasting, even for the uh, three months after fasting. Um, what we saw in the questionnaires was that um, mindfulness and well-being increased um, through fasting or during fasting, and the mindfulness even uh, was significantly higher even after three months after the fast, which means that um, obviously there was an effect that carried over for a long time. And uh, mindfulness is something that is being discussed more and more because it obviously helps people be more resilient towards uh, stress and other um, diseases that have to do with stress and anxiety and so on. Um, I found that there's three quotes that I would like to to um, tell you that um, somebody said the whole body is subordinated to the spirit. Um, like people feel that that um, their self control increases. It's it's more um, yeah. Th that was very interesting for us to see. Um, then one said this moment of letting go that you notice how many things feel easier because of that. I think that also influences daily life that you enter your day more relaxed. This is also interesting that uh, this um, has to do also with this kind of um, attention and mindfulness thing that we that I just said, um, but also like really this kind of um, getting a new perspective on life, right? Um, then the third quote is, now you do something else that is good. It penetrates you, that you get out of your normal trot, your normal lifestyle and step aside, and that it sometimes hurts, but that you get a kick, live another frequency that is refreshing, that is soothing. Talking about um, habits that, that help us um, restore or, um, or stay healthy, restore health or stay healthy, um, this is a very, very significant thing that people obviously um, are helped to have a better look at their habits and maybe even change habits during fasting. And this uh, comes so well with this quote from Abdul Baha, where he says that prayer and fasting are the cause of awakening and mindfulness. So, um, yeah, we could see that definitely in our outcomes. And I hope that you enjoyed listening to this. Thank you so much, Daniela, for taking the time to explain to us the nature of the study and some of its findings. I'm truly inspired by your work. We look forward to sharing where this study can be read in full once it is published. Thank you so much for your support and your interest and wish you a wonderful fast.